Sam and Grant's story began with a cliche. It was love at first sight. It was weird actually because we didn't really start dating as such. We just sort of became best friends yeah. in a way and then just developed from there. We just kind of, <laughs> we just assumed that it was a thing and it was forever and it, it is forever and it was a thing. <laughs> but six months into their storybook romance, the couple was thrown a curveball. Sam had been getting dizzy spells and after running some tests, her doctor found out why. He said to me, Sam, you have leukaemia. Unless you start chemotherapy tomorrow, you will have three months to live and you will never have children. And, and for me, it wasn't the leukaemia. It was that I would never have children because I'd always wanted to be a mum. I felt like that was my life ripped away from me. She was only 20 and her relationship was still new, but Sam knew she'd want a family with Grant one day. So when a doctor from IVF Australia offered a glimmer of hope, Sam was willing to try it. He said, there's research that if we would take some of your ovarian tissue, freeze your tissue, maybe one day we can put it back into your body and you will have the chance to have your own children. I think being given such horrific news that that just felt like maybe there's this glimmer of opportunity. Once Sam's tissue was taken, she had a bigger battle, fighting cancer. And it wasn't easy. Over the next few years, Sam would undergo countless rounds of chemo, full body radiation, and finally, a stem cell transplant. There was reactions to chemotherapy, like I lost my voice for three months, I lost my memory, and I had to deal with the fact about losing my hair and my eyebrows, and my eyelashes. At the age of 20 is heartbreaking. I honestly don't think we, I could have got through what I have got through without him. Because he's everything that I needed in this journey. And he's never wavered once. I just sort of get the easy part that I just have to turn up and fall asleep next to her and make a joke every now and then. In 2011, 23-year-old Sam was finally declared cancer-free. The young couple could finally get on with their lives. We were young. I was 23 and Grant was 27. Seven, yeah. But we knew. We'd been through hell. We knew through thick and thin that we would be together. So we did that and then we kind of just enjoyed living. <laughs> we moved from house to house and experienced the beach and just life, going out for coffee, going for bike rides. And then we were like, well, what now? Like. Do we try and put the tissue back in? But for a cancer patient like Sam, ovarian tissue grafting comes with a risk. When you put the tissue back, you could have re-entry of cancer cells. We had no guarantees that this was going to work. So we were saying to these patients, you know, we'll do our best, but there are no guarantees. Yeah, I suppose at that point it felt like very much a long shot. Mm. Um, this would be miraculous if it works. Mm. Just six months after the transplant, the tissue had successfully grafted and there were no signs of the cancer returning. Sam and Grant embarked on their next journey, IVF. When we had our first cycle, we did get one egg and we had it fertilised, but then it didn't end up in a pregnancy. Mm. The emotional toll it takes is so heavy. And eventually, as we kind of got the hang of it, we would just do it and we would just keep going. And we would keep going until we were successful. They did keep going 37 times. This is a process that is so hard on her and she is incredibly amazing at just persevering. And I remember finding out when the first child in the world was born through this mm. and just feeling like, oh my God. Like. This could be possible for us. <laughs> Seven years after the tissue transplant, the words she was desperate to hear. She was pregnant. And when we heard that heartbeat, I audibly burst into tears. Oh, it's a good rate. Oh, it's 
screams, Jonathan. In March last year, Sam and Grant welcomed their baby daughter, Banksia, into the world. She would just bring us so much joy. And I think she brought us the fact that we could let go of the past. She brought so much love and joy into our life. It's incredible what a beautiful little baby can do. And we couldn't love her anymore. She's so amazing. What was once an experimental procedure is now commonplace for young cancer patients. We've now had 15 births here at Melbourne IVF and over the last 10 to 15 years there have been over 200 births reported worldwide. I think Dr Kate Stern thinks I'm a bit crazy <laughs> to yeah. keep on going. Yeah. It has been one of those moments I guess in my professional life when I've just been overwhelmed with how important it is to not give up and to help our patients do everything we can to have a baby. <laughs> and they're not done yet. Now Sam and Grant are trying for their second baby. You're walking. I'm so passionate about this because I want every girl who's diagnosed with cancer to have an option to have kids because that's what's given me life and she is our everything. We have overcome that diagnosis that first day as far as leukaemia and the fertility and that feels so big for us. Having her the day that she was born was just like, this is over, we can move on. And she's the best. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bang, bang. <laughs> Good lord. Oh, oh Rachel. Far out. Do you think, like, what is possible now for people? Like, what science does for people? Mm. And the fact that they didn't think they'd ever have a kid and now they've, they're trying for their second? Like, are you kidding me? What a magical, magical thing. You know, it's Imagine being given the, the news by doctors that you are in the fight of your life yeah. and then have to think about a life that doesn't exist yet that you desperately, desperately want yeah. and that this can happen. And to do Beautiful it 37 cup. times, you are oh. amazing. Truly, yeah. that is incredible.